Hey everybody, welcome back to Deadman DZ's Kanji Study Sessions. We got 12 new vocabulary words from JLPT N1 list for you today. And as always, if you see new kanji in these lists, we're going to go over the readings, the meanings, and how to re remember them based on the radicals that make up the kanji. See a new word, but it's made of radicals we, or sorry, if we see a new word, but it's made of kanji we already know, we're just going to go over the meanings of the two kanji and how they come together to make our new word. Uh, if you don't want to listen to me, feel free to skip ahead. I am going to write these down on stream. If you just want these word lists, head on over to Google Drive. Our first word of the day is kisu, an odd number. This is pretty a straight translation. A kisu is an odd number or a strange number with our radical for or kanji for strange and our kanji for number. A, an odd or a strange number is a kisu. Kisu is an odd number. Kisu is an odd number. Kisu this. Kisu. Kisu is an odd number. Kisu this. Kisu this is an odd literally translated a strange number, but you get the idea. An odd number is a kisu. Number two is rinshoku. Rinshoku is our new noun for stinginess, miserliness, a miser or selfishness. With rin on the left side, our new kanji for miserly or stingy or sparing, and shoku on the right side having pretty much the same meaning. Rin on the left side is made up of our kanji for culture or writings, and a mouth. So I'm thinking of like kind of a miserly old man. <clears throat> so rin shoku no rin. Alternately pronounced shiwai. Both of these can be, be words for the word or for the verb oshimu, meaning to hold dearly or to hold sparingly. Oshimu hokani rin is stingy or miserly. Rin shoku no rin. And this word's odd because it has two kan or two kan yeah, it's got two kanji in it that we haven't studied yet. Uh, but that's okay. Rin shoku no rin is stingy, sparingly, or miserly. With our old man speaking about culture and being miserly in general. If you think of a better way to remember that, please let me know. Rin shoku no rin is stingy or miserly. And shoku on the right side, our new kanji that also means miserly, stingy, or sparing, pronounced oshimu for our kanji for holding dear or uh, holding sparingly, or spending sparingly, I should say, or shoku, shoku. Radicals in this kanji are a 10 dividing two people that are standing over a number of times. Hmm. I guess you can think of the people dividing up resources a number of times and in that they have to be sparing. I guess, yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. So you've got two people divided by the number 10 and they are dividing something up a number of times. So they have to be sparing when they give each other their shares. Rin shoku no shoku is sparing miserly or stingy. Rin shoku no shoku. As you'll notice, both of these kanji mean sparing or miserly and stingy. And this is, comes on the long list of words that are built like that. They're essentially both the same meaning kanji wise, but they put them together just to drive home, I guess, that this is not a homonym for something else. That this really is miserly and stingy. Rin shoku is miserly or stingy. A miser. Sparingly. Rin shoku. Can it also be an adverb? It's an ad it's a na adjective, which is code for noun, but it is a na adjective. Rin shoku is stingy or s miserly. And rin shoku are for full word is stingy or sparing. Number three is shikitari. Shikitari is a custom convention or tradition. No kaji remember here, we just have to remember the sound. Shikitari is a custom 
tradition or customary practice. Shikitari desu. Shikitari. Shikitari desu. Shikitari. Shikitari. Shikitari is a custom or practice. Number four is an N gala. N on the left side for fate or destiny, and gala on the right side for, I think, a side or a, a portion of. Yeah, side leaning or opposing. So, N gala is the side that is towards fate, literally translated, but it's a veranda, a porch, or a balcony. It can also mean the bone at the base of a fin, like of a fish fin, but I'm not going to remember that. But we are going to remember veranda or porch. This is the uh, side or the leaning part of a building that puts you in danger of fate or destiny, meaning you could fall off the balcony or the porch. Engala is a veranda, porch, or balcony, the destined part. The destined side portion. Engala is a veranda, balcony, or porch. Ingala this is a veranda, balcony, or porch. Ingala this is literally the leaning fate, aka the veranda over which you party you most of the time, but every once in a while it crashes and you die, and fate has claimed you. Engala is a veranda or porch. Engala this. Number five is Ryodo. Ryo on the left side for a territory or, do, or a domain, and Do on the right side is a land. So this is just a land that makes up a domain, a dominion, territory, or some possession. Ryodo is a dominion or territory. Yodo is a domain or territory. Yodo this. Yodo is a domain or territory. Yodo this. Yodo. Ryodo is a domain or territorial land, specifically. Ryodo this. Number six is a ku kaku. Ku on the left side for a division or a section of something, and kaku on the right side for a planning out or a drawing or a picture. So ku kaku is a pictured out division or section of something, aka a block, a plot, a lot, or a partition. I've hardly ever seen this used in a case where it's not talking about land, so I would think more of like a block, a plot, or a lot when you're thinking of ku kaku, but it can just mean a division boundary or par partition as well. Ku kaku is a plot or a plot of land or a block in a city a kukaku is a division or sub area pictured out on the land by some kind of drawing kukaku is a division boundary or partition a plot of land or a block a kukaku is a block This. Number seven is Ken Nai. Ken on the left side is within some range or radius, and Nai on the right side is within. So this is uh, the range or this is literally within some range or radius. Ken Nai. Within range of something, within the sphere of influence of something, like within radio range, you would say Ken Nai. Ken Nai is within range. Kenmidus is within range or within something's reach. Kenmidus. Kenmai. Kenmai is within range of something.
in range. Number eight is a boon shō. Boon on the left side for literatures or writings, and shō on the right side for writing. So this is a writing writing, aka a document, a writing records, letters, or a document addressed to someone specifically. Boon shō is a document or writing of something, or specifically a letter addressed to someone. A boon shō is a document record or writings and papers. Boon shō. Boon shō this. Writings, documents, or papers, or a letter addressed to someone specifically. Boon shō this. Boon shō. This. Number nine is a key say. Key on the left side for a standardization or a regularization. I think. Let me double check that. Key is a standard or a measure. And say on the right side for a system or a law. So this is a standard law or a standard um, rule. So key say is a regulation, policing control, or a restriction of something. A key say is a regulation. I like that word the best. Kise is a regulation. Kise desu. Kise is a regulation. Kise is a regulation. Kise is a regulation. Kise is a regulation. Kise desu. Kise. Number 10 is takumi. Takumi is, I think it's an, is it a non-adjective? Yes, it's a non-adjective. For skillful, dexterous, masterful, cleverful, or cunning, with coal on the left side for kind of engineering or creation of something, and our radical on the left side here is one that means, listen to this, obstruction of breath as it seeks release. I guess this is kind of like the guy's head and this is like kind of his chest um, holding out because he's holding his breath and he won't let it go. Um, so the way I'm looking at this, meaning adroit, skilled, or ingenuity, means he's kind of letting out that breath into his work or his construction. So coal is adroit, skilled, or ingenuity with letting out your chi or ki into the whatever construction you're working on. Coal or takumi is skillful, dexterous, and masterful. Takumi hokani coal is skillful, dexterous, or masterful. Takumi hokani ko. Takumi hokani ko des. Takumi hokani ko. Takumi hokani ko. Skillful, masterful, dexterous, or adroit. Number 11 is a pretty easy one with kuiru, with our kanji for frustration and regret. Kuiru is to regret. Another transitive verb for regretting something. Kuiru is to regret. Kuiru this is to regret. Kuiru this to regret. Kuyashi no ku. Kuiru is to regret. And finally, number 12 is gai ryaku. Gai on the left side for an outline, summary, or the main points of something, a gist, and ryaku on the right side for omission or abbreviation. So gai ryaku is an abbreviation or an omission down to the main points. Gai ryaku. It doesn't mean you're leaving out the main points. It means you're leaving the summary to the main points. Gai ryaku is an outline, summary, gist, or in brief. Gai ryaku desu. 
It's an outline summary or the gist of something. A point in brief. Gairyaku desu. Gairyaku. It's the gist, summary, and outline or the points in brief. Gairyaku desu. Gairyaku. It's an outline, gist, or summary. Gairyaku desu is an abbreviation down to only the main points. That's all the words for today. Let's go back to the top, make sure we've got them all in our brain, at least for now. We'll make flashcards and really make a memorization in our brain later. Um, but for now, it's good to just have kind of a, a flag, if you will, in the brain where the memorization is going to go. Our first word was an odd number with a literally translated strange number or kisu. A kisu is literally an odd number. Next, we had rinshoku with stinginess, miser, or miserliness. Rin on the left side with our literature talker. And shoku on the right side with our two guys separated. who have to sparingly divide things amongst themselves. A convention, tradition, or the mores of something is shikitari. Shikitari is a custom, tradition, or practice. Shikitari desu. A veranda, a porch, or a balcony is the destiny side, or the leaning destiny, with N on the left side for destiny or a connection, and Gala on the right side for siding, leading, or opposing. Engala. I guess you could say it's opposing destiny by standing above nothing on a porch or a balcony. A dominion, a territory, or a possession is a ryodo, specifying that it is a do on the right side for a land, ryo on the left side for a territory or a jurisdiction, and do on the right side for land. A division, section, block, boundary, partition, but particularly a plot, lot, or block is a kukaku, ku on the left side for a division, and kaku on the right side for our drawing or diagram of it. Within the range of something or within some sphere is ken nai, ken on the left side for a radius and nai on the right side for within, literally within a radius. Ken nai is within range or within a sphere. A document, writing, or records of something or a document addressed to someone specifically is a bun shō. Bun, the same radical from rin shōku no rin and uh, shō on the right side for uh, kaku, for to write. Bun shō is a writing or a document. A regulation or a restriction on something is a kise, ki on the left side for a standard of measure, and se on the right side for a law. Kise desu. Skillful, dexterous, masterful, clever, or cunning is takumi, hokani ko, with our uh, holding of the chi in specifically to let out into our construction. Takumi. Is skillful, adroit, or cunning. To regret is kuiru, with our kanji from kuyashi. For frustrating or annoying, kuiru is to regret. Also seen in the word kokai, to regret, a regret. Kokai, uh, same kanji, kuiru. And finally, an outline summary, just or in brief, is gai ryaku. Gai ryaku desu. Gai on the left side for an outline or summary, and Ryaku on the right side for omission or abbreviation. Thanks for watching today, everybody. Uh, it's been a while since I did one of these. Again, I'm taking the N2 in December, so I'm taking more time to study for that because my, again, we're in the N1 words now, so my vocabulary is pretty good. I've come across 40 words in the last month that I haven't known, which is relatively small compared to how many words we word overall. You know, that's only four days worth of words. Uh, so I'm kind of focusing on grammar and um, kind of how to answer the test questions they will be asking rather than uh, 
getting more kanji in. But we should set up with more kanji afterwards. We're almost done with the N1 list. If we want to do kind of a supplemental kind of couple of lessons after that, we might. Um, and I might do a few of these just for the N2 words that I didn't know. Um, actually, that's a good idea. I will add to that the supplemental words I find in the in the prep books that I haven't found yet. That's a good idea. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you had a good um, little break from these lessons if you were taking a break. Um, and if you didn't, good luck. Thanks for watching. Domo. Arigatou gozaimashita.